Okay, I'm just doing a little video quickly here for people like um, Man Cave, No One, Robot Seven Nine Seven, and others. Just to let you know that I am still working on this thing, this plasma speaker thing, and yet still not getting good results. Now, I don't know if the audio in this video is very good because I'm just using the camera's microphone. Very quick setup with the thing so I can record, get it out there on YouTube so it's not going to be any editing or anything. Anyway, so I decided. A robot 797 pointed me to a page with plans for a DIY plasma tweeter which I've printed out. And I have made an output coil with the exact same specifications that was stated in here. Right. 35 millimeter diameter coil form, 15 turns of wire. Now I don't have the same gauge wire, which may be the problem here. Also for the inductor, I made an inductor with the same specifications that were specified in there. An inductor that you can wind yourself, which is shown right here. Seems to be overexposed on the camera, but you can just about make it out. Anyhow, I'm still not getting much output. Now I'm trying the P500 tube or PL500 or whatever it was. Let's see what have we got here. Well, one of these. Anyway. Still not getting much output. And the circuit is exactly the same as before, except, of course, the different output coil, the different inductor, and I've also added these two resistors, 22 ohms. And still, when we get a little flame that comes on automatically, it says you have to start the flame by touching the thing right there. I'm not going to run it for too long, obviously, because I don't want to red plate and damage the tube. The thing is, I've tried it. Now, somewhere in the thing it says, well, I've got a schematic somewhere. Um, let's see if I can find it on the computer. No, it's going to be a bit too difficult to show it since I'm not going to be doing any editing. Where it says, on grid 2, I should have about 90 volts. 60 to 90 volts, that's what it says in the schematic. But I've had to use a lot more even to get that little, that little thing there. And also, it makes any any speakers nearby buzz, which is kind of weird. I don't even know if it might even be interfering with the microphone on the camera. But let's just take a voltage reading. There we go. And full range. Oh, sorry, the meter's now. The, if you're wondering what the beeping was, it was this meter while I was just sitting in the range. Even though this is an auto ranging meter. And I'm just going to read out the voltage. Okay, I'm going to connect the negative here. So I'm just doing this all in one shot. Watch over here, and my positive, where I've got this resistor feeding the second grid. I've also put a capacitor between the second grid and the ground, just to see if that would help. I'm going to try and do this without putting myself in a place where I'm going to shock myself. I do not want to get a 600 volt shock. Okay, I'm just going to turn this on and we'll see what voltage is going into the second grid. Okay, we've got about 240 volts going in there. 
there. For some reason, the actually a little bit of plasma seemed to be a bit more when I was touching that. I don't really know why. But yeah, that's up 240 volts going into that grid. That was kind of weird. It was a little bit stronger when I had the thing connected. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm sure some two experts would know. I would not say I'm, I'm an expert on tubes. I mean, I know a lot about them, but I wouldn't say I'm an expert. Okay, that was not a flame what you saw just then. It just melted the end of my pin and that was the steel sort of boiling off. Um, so yeah. I have no idea when I connect my meter to that resistor why, why the output's a little bit stronger. But that's at 240 volts at the grid. Let's just see if we can see that in the dark. Let's see how that looks in the dark. Okay, it's refusing to start because the end of my pin is all balled up. There we go. And then most of that, what you can see, that's the pin glowing, that's not the flame. That's the actual glow from the pin. So anyway, I'm going to put this project on hold because I'm sure that the main thing that's holding things back is the inductor. So I'm going to put this whole project on hold until I can find a good LCR meter. Okay, I guess I will have to do a little bit of editing because the camera's exposure was up way too much and you couldn't see the screen. But anyway, this is the meter I'm going to try. Like I said, it's not the most attractive looking meter, but the good thing is, we look at the specifications. This is the only one I've managed to find for a decent price that can measure inductance in the range that I want it to do. So I've got 0 0.001 microhenry to 100 millihenry. The inductor I need to make is 100 microhenry, so that will be it. I'll make an inductor, measure it, see if I need to add or take away any windings. And I will know how close I am because I'll be able to measure how much inductance it actually has. My mind's gone blank. Anyway. Should be able to see this a little better now. I know I've still got the autofocus turned off, but yeah. So no idea how it came out because I cannot see the picture from the camera. So anyway, that's how things going. Man, I've only got to clean this place up. It's a mess. But anyway, that's just about it for this video. So yeah. And until next time, goodbye.